Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jay, sir. Uh, recently, I've been uh, learning on new technologies, uh, especially on the native side uh, of how to develop a native application with uh, the, the uh, Kotlin, with uh, Swift, or just to use uh, Flutter. So I'm curious about how the internal me mechanics of uh, of the those frameworks, you know? Like say, uh, I'm using React.js every day, and there's another one called React Native, right? And we can write the uh, uh, native na native component just as we are doing uh, for the front front end world. And actually, they are communicating uh, with the native components um, by using. Uh, I, I I'm not sure about the internals yet, but uh, they kind of using the JavaScript core, uh, JavaScript engine and do the calculations there, but um, but using the native uh, site to for rent as a renderer. And uh, yeah, things like that are very uh, fascinating to me uh, because I've never had such experience of uh, doing them. And uh, yeah, about Flutter, I think they have another story. And you know, as not as new super apps emerges, and like, uh, uh, some other platforms they are providing another ways of creating applications, but not technically technically web applications, right? They are not using the browser and uh, you're not using the HTML engine. They're not using the browser, but they are creating their own web view, not a web view, but a render, re uh, uh, something view, right? To allow web developers to create a native UI easily. Okay, so this is a, a series of videos. This is the first one. So today I'm gonna uh, investigate it on how to, the communication between native and web, uh, especially on iOS. So it's WK Web View. So how they communicate. Uh, so before it goes, I must say I have I have never developed an iOS app with uh, Swift before. Uh, like eight years ago, I wrote a little game we using the Optic C. And uh, it was fun, actually. Uh, recently, the Swift has gone, uh, I don't know, version 5, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, let's start with a simple, uh, a simple uh, example to demonstrate how uh, the communication uh, uh, is doing. Actually, this is very useful for, I would say, uh, in some some companies, if like uh, you are a web front end team developing a, a web application run, running inside your native app, like the Messenger app, right? Uh, it would be very important to uh, to understand how the communication uh, is doing. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's begin. Uh, so I will open my Xcode and I just search on the First, I don't, actually don't know anything about the Swift UI. I guess it was something like, something like the React, React, a little like React. They have the declarative ways of uh, uh, implementing the UI interface. And I just search on the internet for, uh, for I say communicating, blah blah blah, and uh, I copy some code and uh, do some. Uh, modifications and here is a, an example of how I uh, will dem demonstrate with you. So let's first run the code. Okay, here's a button and here actually is an HTML uh, a WK web, web view and this is HTML and I click it. So this is log, say it's the function and uh, one second after we get a message from the native side, say from late net native. Hello, I got a message, message hello. This is the time. You see every time I click the button, the time is different. Yeah. So this is, a, okay, and see, we can see the console in the native side, say actually the native uh, a view, uh, native components received a message called with well, this is JSON, right? From the web view, say we, we get the message and we, uh, send back the response after one second. There's a delay here, uh, mimicking uh, that uh, say that there's some uh, heavy uh, work, right? like calculation or fetching the API, some something like that. Okay, so let's see what what is going on. 
Um, first, this there is this in index HTML. Uh, we can see that uh, there is only a button here, like the click me here, and when it is and uh, there's a log area is here below this line, and there's a log, and this is YouTube function, and uh, this is a method to receive the message from. This is uh, to receive messages from native and uh, send messages to native okay in the JavaScript world we, we define this message uh, receiver in the webkit dot message handlers dot bridge and we define them our message function and it will accept the message and uh, when the message is received we log it and this log will be appended to the log area and when this button is closed we can see that uh, we log the type of the webkit.messagehandlers.bridge.post message and it tells us that uh, it's actually a function okay and then we send the message right because it's a function we call this function with this uh, parameter yeah and this message is sent to the native side Okay, now let's see what the native is is doing. Okay, uh, this is Swift code, but yeah, uh, don't be frightened. It's actually pretty easy to understand. Uh, it has slight uh, differences between the JavaScript, but I, th I believe that there's no problem for you to understand. Okay, I spent uh, almost two or three hours to get used to this Swift code, and uh, I've done the uh, Swift UI tutorial. It's super fantastic. I suggest to everyone, every front-end developer, uh, t take the uh, tutorial from the Apple. It's pretty cool, and uh, it's it's a totally different world. And uh, I'm still wondering why I bother creating web apps, right, with these fantastic technologies and those sleek, smooth transitions, the beautiful UI with native sites. So I think native <laughs> is the best. Anyway, it's a uh, Let's go back to uh, come back to our work. Okay, so actually this is a view, and we uh, we have this body, uh, this main area, you would say, and we okay. This is an extra. This is not needed, and this is also not needed. It, okay, okay. So in this view, we just uh, add this uh, to show a web view. Okay, I could add another one called V stack essay. Uh, kind of like uh, Flutter, I would say. It's similar to the JX, but, but uh, it's different. Okay, uh, we just add a uh, text. Okay, hello. Okay, let's run it again. Ah, hmm? oh, a stubble quote. Uh, great, you see that there's a text here. So yeah, it doesn't matter. I just uh, demonstrated how we could organize the UI in hierarchies. Okay, this web view is uh, is a web view here. We actually wrap wrap uh, the uh, the web view from WebKit. It's because it's WK web view, WebKit web view, and uh, we need to wrap it in UI view representable representable. It's some some wrapper I think in Swift UI. Okay, and this is a coordinator. Coordinator, we will uh, come back to it here later. Okay, so in this web view, uh, UI web view representable, we have two functions. Which, which will, first one is make UI web view, another one is update UI view. In the here, we would initialize the web WK web view, and here we would load the HTML in the uh, from the index here. Okay, so the for the update we have view, we get the path for the HTML, and then we locate the HTML and we load the file URL. Web view loads the file URL, and uh, yeah, so, so this is pretty easy to understand, right? And for the initialization, it's a little bit, bit more complicated. Okay, so uh, here is we initialize the WK web view, we set the size, and we have some X configuration here. The, config, uh, the configuration is uh, here, WK, we view, 
uh, configuration, we need the configuration because we want to extend the code, the JavaScript code here called WK Web Message Handlers Bridge, right? We need to, you know, in the in the JavaScript environment, the default, there will be no, not, no such things, right? We need to, I, I would say, inject this bridge into the uh, JavaScript runtime. So here, we need to use the user control code, user content controller. So we create this configuration, we set the user contro content controller, and we get, we initialize the user con content controller. So here, user content controller, we add a coordinator with the name bridge. So this is where the injection happen happens. So we add this controller to this web view, and all those events, the messages, right? which the user can, content controller can handle will be dedicated to this co coordinator, I would say. So the, where this coordinator is from, it's uh, from this main coordinator. It's the uh, put protocol from this UI view re representable. You know, it's a wrapper for the, uh, the U web, uh, UI kit. So we return this co coordinator and we define the method in this coordinator. Also, uh, I will come back. Why? Why we need another one? It's called navigation delegate. Okay, let's go, come come. Uh, let's see what the coordinator is doing. Let's see. Uh, the most important part is the user content controller, right? We said we want to inject the uh, bridge here. In index HTML. In this HTML, there's a message handlers bridge. So, as we said, we inject a bridge. And when there is a message, right? We actually the the we add the coordinator. So the when the uh, message the post message is triggered, this user content controller did receive message. This is this is the hook will be triggered. So we print the message, which is the uh, which is the here message. This is string this string, and then we cr get the date, current date. And then we set a timeout for one second, and then we reply the message, right? The self message to web view, and with the message say, hello, I got a message, and this is your message, add the date here. And uh, this is the, this is util function to, uh, to how we re send the message back. Okay, so until now, it's pretty easy to understand, right? We actually, uh, we need to, uh, if we want to handle the communication, we need the coordinator to do the communication for us. So we created this coordinator. We uh, uh, we we extend to the WK script message handler. With this hand protocol, we would have this user con controller did receive message function. We hook we can use, and uh, we hook it up. All right, and now. Every time it is postmates is called, we would do everything here. And now, how would we send the message back? For that, we would use the function, the method on the uh, on the WK Web View. There is evaluate JavaScript. So it's like a tree, it's like just a, yeah eval in the JavaScript runtime for the for the Web View. And we say WK message handlers bridge a message. This is the message in string. So we just uh, trigger this piece of code in this uh, web, web view here. This is the WK web view. And so, yeah, so this is to receive the message, for the native to receive the message, for the native to send the message back to the web, uh, web, web view. And uh, this is for the uh, web view to receive the message. And this is for uh, the uh, web view to send, send message. So here's a problem, right? Uh, we actually, in the uh, make UI web view, we create this coordinator in and set the coordinator to this web view, right? But in this coordinator, we actually want the UI web view to, to send back the, the message by using evaluated JavaScript string, a JavaScript script. And we actually, don't know the reference, right? We need the reference for the web view, so I'm not sure whether this is the 100% uh, right or the best uh, approach. 
So for this coordinator, I would say just we define the uh, uh, changeable. The var means variable. It's variable if you use let. It's constant. In Swift, we say we uh, create the reference for the web w web view, and we need to get the reference for the web view, right? And in here, so to do this, I used. I'm not sure this is right. I used the navigation delegate. And set it to this coordinator, and then we extend WK Navigate Delegate. So navigation means the web page. I would say start loading or it's note loaded, it's destroyed. So so some of uh, that kind of life cycle, right? So we extend it, and now we could use this web view dead finish navigation hook. And in this hook, we get the web view. You see this hook. Well, the first parameter will be the web view. So we say self web view, uh, the the web view, right? So when you coordinate, uh, uh, this is just a demonstration. So this is uh, might might not be right. Anyway, uh, we collect the reference in this coordinator, and then when we rest receive a message, we would use this reference to send it back the message. So this is it. Uh, the uh the why it's this timeout is, is not triggered. Hmm. I don't know. So I need to learn more how everything is working. But anyway, for, for, for now, I just basically understand how the communication happen, happens, right? Yeah, you may know that if there's a, it's asynchronous, right? We send a message and sometime later, the native will send us back the message. So how would we target the message, right? There might be the 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 message's uh, reply ladder might come first to the web view, right? So there will be, the order will not be kept. That's actually pretty simple. Uh, we would just say the message hello here with the I would say ID, something like ID. We generate a unique ID every time, maybe like say uh, I would say he. Date now. Of course, this is not right. Uh, anyway, yeah, the message we now we have ID, and then when we send the message back, we could you see we send the message, and then we could extract this ID out, right? And then we re we could cache uh, the callback in the JavaScript world, right? So we could handle this. Beautifully, we just a little bit of uh, more JavaScript code, so that's not a problem. Okay, so basically this is that's all for today's video. Uh, I hope it helps. Mm, every time it's go, every time uh, this app goes to the background, the timer will not work anymore. Hmm. So this is not a good approach, I would say. Anyway. Uh, that's it for this video. Hope it helps. Uh, in the following videos, uh, I will do one more about the JavaScript core, uh, which is related to the reactive native and also some uh, other super apps and uh, maybe one more about the Flutter. Uh, I'm still learning. So if you're interested, maybe you can follow uh, my channel. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and I will bring more videos to it. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Bye-bye.